What is biltong? Biltong is a meat product that has been marinated in a mainly vinegar mix that is seasoned with spices that is mainly coriander that is then hung on hooks and slow dried for 6 to 12 days, curing it. It is often compared to jerky, but this is incorrect because biltong and jerky are prepared vastly different to one another. What's the difference between biltong and jerky? As I mentioned before, biltong is slow dried over 6 to 12 days, while jerky is dried over 12 to 24 hours in a dehydrator. Also with biltong, you'll find that most of the spice is, consists of coriander, while this isn't necessarily the case with jerky. Another core difference between the way jerky and biltong is made is that jerky uses a lot of heat with the use of the dehydrator, while with biltong, this is not the case. You will find that because the drying process is a lot slower with biltong, this means that the meat has a richer texture and a fuller flavor. The different cuts of biltong can include rump, fillet, top side, sirloin, silver side, or different cuts from the hip. On the topic of different grades of biltong, you can get wet, medium, or dry biltong. And with that, you can decide whether you want fatty or non-fatty biltong. Before you get started, make sure you have the following things. White, brown, or apple cider vinegar, if you want to be traditional. A watery soy sauce. An oyster sauce of your choice. Meat. It's up to you what meat you want to use, but I suggested some earlier. Biltong spice that you can either order online or order from the South African shop. In the same way, you can get yourself a fruit dryer or biltong maker. So use a website or go to a South African store. And finally, just to make your life a little bit easier, make sure you get a large Tupperware to work with. Let's now discuss the marinade you're going to be using for your biltong. The key here is the majority of your mix must be vinegar. This is to make sure no bacteria grows on your biltong, and this is also to tenderize your meat. Then add a bit of soy sauce for saltiness and a nice color, and oyster sauce just to add a little bit extra to complement the flavors. Stir vigorously. Make sure to do a taste test before you ever put the meat in. It's about personal preference here, but just know that this is going to be the base taste of your meat. Today I'm using a beef rump. You'll notice there is a thick layer of fat at the top. This is the way I love my bultong. I like wet fatty bultong. So when you're choosing your meat, make sure you choose the meat that's right for you. Personally, I like rump the best because I feel like you get the best value for money as well as flavor. Cuts like fillet and top side end up being quite expensive. So for me, I like rump because it's good value for money as well as flavor. Once you are happy with the flavor of your mixture, make sure to submerge all your meat for 6 to 24 hours. Make sure all your meat is completely saturated within that 6 to 24 hour period. This could mean changing the position of your meat within your Tupperware. Once the meat has been marinated for an adequate amount of time, apply the spice mix and rub it into the meat. I find this technique works the best for making sure the spice stays on the meat once you hang it. Now that your meat is completely prepared and in the biltong maker, let's talk about food dryers or biltong makers. They use 60 watt tungsten incandescent light bulbs and a powerful computer fan in order to dry and cure your meat. Hooks will come with the food dryer, so don't worry about that. If you find that the pieces of meat are too large, it's okay to break them up and use a separate hook. And one final tip, before you ever hang your meat within your biltong maker, Put some aluminium foil at the bottom of your biltong maker to avoid having to clean a big mess. The final process of making sure that your meat is cured effectively is simply rotating your meat and alternating their positions within the dryer. This will help your meat cure efficiently. I like to use a system in which all my hooks are pointing in a single direction to make sure I don't get confused over which pieces of meat I've turned around as well as their positions. So at this point, your biltong has been curing for about a week, maybe a bit more, depending on how wet you like your biltong. Make sure you have a sharp knife and a cutting board ready. I would suggest using your Tupperware you used to marinate the meat earlier, as it will be an adequate size to store all the meat. Cut fat first where possible, because cutting fat and sinew halfway through a cut makes it much more difficult to work with. Be prepared to clean up a fairly big mess, 
the coriander and spices will come off when you are cutting. Once you've cut all your meat, store in the fridge and keep it to keep it fresh. Once you finish cutting all your meat and it's in your Tupperware, make sure to store it in the fridge to make sure it stays fresh for longer.